Hello, hello. Welcome, everybody. Thank you for joining us. <laughs> Seems we've got some leaves of gold falling. Mom's got a hat on. Come and fix this thing. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> right, so now I've got bunny ears. Now she's got bunny ears. Uh, okay, let's just get that sorted. All right. Uh, oh, thank you. All right, so we should look normal now. <laughs> Welcome everybody again. Just to recap, this is what we did. Um, um, last week and this is how it looks once it's done this is the proteas so you can actually see I've added some script to it in botanique from Petit Rouge um, this was painted with um, parchment from Petit Rouge and the colors we used on the protea was to lose or not to lose Antoinette's case um, Chantilly lace and some um, absinthe on the on the leaves. I think, can you see it? So it came out very nice, I think. Um, I touched up with some chand um, chandelier on the edges. It's like a gold. I don't know if you can see that. So this has now been done. So next step would be to seal it. Then the table everybody was asking about. Huh? Yeah. This is the table, and this is how it turned out. This is what we did at the top. We used a water slide transfer for this little frame. And then on the sides, we used the Hocus Pocus rub-on transfers for the feet. So there you can see. I did do some antiquing and some sanding here and there just to make it look old. So the next step on this would be then just to seal it as well. So we just put oh, this away. So for today, I want you to accept the challenge, the kitchen challenge. Uh, you need to pick an item out of your kitchen. You need to pick an item out of your kitchen and remake it. And you've got the whole week until Friday to remake your item that you've chosen. So pick an item that you want to remake, either paint it or decoupage it or um, make it look old. Do, do whatever you think is needed. And then on Friday, I want you guys to po um, post your actual stuff that you made of your kitchen, please. I missed the memo about the kitchen. You're getting it now. <laughs> this is not kitchen. No, that's not kitchen. No. My sewing room. So, Mark, tell us what are you going to be doing today? This is a box that I inherited from my mother. Um, a sewing box. And it's got a little shelf that still fits in. With all your cottons and goodies in. So you can see it's an old, horrible looking thing, which I'm going to dolly up. Sorry, it's not kitchen. <laughs> we'll just call it kitsch. Yeah, no, no, call it whatever you want. <laughs> And what I've taken is I've actually got this little box that's made out of pine. So we put our cutlery in it. So I just want to dolly it up a bit. It's a bit boring. Too boring for me. So um, I want to dolly it up. So remember, the challenge is take something out of your kitchen and dolly, dolly it up. Either by painting it or by uh, decoupaging or doing something nice. So... Let me guess, you're going to be using parchment. Yeah. All right, so Mars using parchment again. <laughs> I'll be using Midnight in Paris. This is a very dark blue color, but I am going to show you later on how I get it a little bit lighter. We are going to be doing embellishments as well. These embellishments are from Rustic Bling. I hope you can see it. So we are going to be doing that as well. So, what are you busy crafting on or making? Tell us. Are you just watching or are you crafting while you're watching? What are you up to? Did you get feedback about what they're doing yet? Yes, I got some pictures that was posted by 
good debt. So yeah, we did that. We, we put it on the page. So everybody, as you're doing and crafting with us, if you've done something, post it on the page so that everybody can see what you are doing. So remember to post your pics and your photos. So I'm just giving this box um, one color. I want to show you how dark it is. I hope you can see the colour. It's a nice blue. Hello, Mimpy. <laughs> Mimpy says hello. Are you crafting, Mimpy? So yeah, just get a cut on. You just cover it. It's got these white um, ropes on the side. I'm going to try and not get them painted. Um, let's see how that goes. Oh, how's it going with yours? It's for Brenda or Christine. I mean, oh, Brenda is yeah. open Brenda up and down. Anyone else? How are you doing? What have you been up to? How's lockdown been treating you? Have you been staying busy? Oh, yes. <laughs> We've been staying rather busy. Hello, Shanaiki. <laughs> We've been staying busy, yeah. We've been crafting almost every day. Yesterday, we took out to actually finish the table and the tray we did. So, yeah, we've been very busy with that. Have you been baking something? Uh, Mimpy's making masks. So, anybody wanting masks, Mimpy's making masks. You'll be a rich woman after Corona, Mimpy. Okay, for the people that have just joined us, I want to show you the little table we did. So this is a coffee table. We've done the top like that. And on the legs, we've used these rub-on transfers. So it came out very nice. It just needs to be sealed still. Was the tray? Um, uh, oh, sorry, I left it there. Okay. I'll show you the tray later. Um, so this is just a um, cutlery box that I'm painting. Mom's doing an old um, sewing box that she wants to revamp a bit. So your challenge for the week is to take something out of your kitchen and revamp it either by painting or decoupaging or even if you just want to put a ribbon around it just revamp it and put us a picture on the on the group here and then on the page and then we can show it to everybody this is the tray we made also parchment at the back and then with some botanic stencil and Rotia is done also with Petit Rouge so it came out very nice. So Ma, what are you planning with that box? What do you want to do with that box? I'm going to stencil that French script yeah. and do an embellishment. Okay, are you going to do some antiquing on it? You said so. No, <laughs> what do you want to do? <laughs> You're going to show us. <laughs> okay. So I'm painting with um, Midnight in Paris from Petit Rouge. Yes, Nikki, we're using um, Petit Rouge Vintage Paint. It's a chalk paint. This color is called Midnight in Paris. It's a dark blue. Can I stand up? Will I be? It's actually quite a nice color. And um, mom's painting with a parchment. It's um, the same color we've used on the table. table and on the tray. You'll see there are other um, tutorials as well. This is the third one. Eh? It yeah. is the third one, yes. 
This is the third tutorial we do. We try and get a tutorial to you every day. Please note the tutorials are free of charge. You don't need to pay anything. Join in, bring your craft projects, what you've got, even if you're not painting the same thing as we are. And just enjoy the day and craft with us. We are going to be doing the um, rustic bling embellishments on the box and I'm going to do it on the cutlery holder as well. Looks like that. More where's your embellishment? What's under that uh, oh. lid? Okay, we'll show you now on that one. That's a bigger one. Now this box of mine has got this white rope. I'm going to try and paint nicely around it. Um, Brunel, are you doing decoupage? She's waiting for paper to dry, so I assume she's doing decoupage. We should do that one day too, do some decoupage. Mm. We did some water slide transfers on Saturday and some rub on transfers from Hocus Pocus. So yeah, I did some stenciling on my tray. What do you say? Does it look okay so far? This is the Midnight in Paris. I'm not going to do the whole inside. I just want to do the top pieces of this um, of this holder. Oh, see, she that messed a lot. What have you been up to? What have you been doing? Oh, uh, Renata is busy with a journal. Oh, that sounds interesting. You must place some pictures on the on the group, please. Eleanor, you must one day just show you them your stencil journal that you made. Yeah, I'll do so. That came out so pretty. But I believe you need a lot of patience with journaling. Is that right, Renal? I don't know if I've got that patience, but I believe it's a very awesome craft to do. I'd like to do that one day. Oh, I'm not painting very nicely now. <coughs> Excuse me. You see I've gone over the edges a bit. Yeah, Nikki, that's the only thing we can do to keep busy. I eh? just watching videos and learning and just <coughs> try and keep sane. I think it's the dust on this thing. Mm -hmm. I've actually decided last night to switch off the news because it was getting um, very depressing. <laughs> uh, I think sometimes you need to just go out of your way to make it, um, not, not to get too, too involved in that because it will get you down very quickly. But today is another day and we're painting, which is nice. We like doing that. So the challenge is you need to pick something out of your kitchen that you want to remake or redo. You've got until Friday to remake something, even if you just done it up with a ribbon or whatever, and then just post us some pictures on the page. That's what we want you to do is just Choose something that you've been wanting to change for quite a while out of your kitchen. Shall I do this part as well? Leave it. I would do it, yeah. But maybe just use a smaller brush, no? This orange one that you've been wanting to use for a while. Yeah. So what we are doing is we're just painting the edges with a smaller brush so that we don't mess like I've done. Okay, Renelle says she will send us some pictures of her journaling. That would be awesome. Thank you. We'd love to see those. Okay, so has no one gone out yet to do some essential shopping? Mm -mm. And what are you doing with your time? How's your day so far been? Alright, I think this is good enough for cutlery. What do you think? 
Would it suffice? What do you think of the color? It's a nice color, hey? So I'm just going to put this outside so that it can dry a bit. I see I've missed And then I'm going to start painting my embellishment. I think I must just put mine out as well because before I can do anything else, I must do a second coat. Okay, so let's get just the lid. The lid. Please. Then I'll do this one. Okay. It must get the second coat. Okay, so the next thing I want to um, get with the paint is the embellishment. I just want to show this one to you. This is the, oh, can you see? Embellishments we are using are from Rustic Bling. This is how they look. I'm going to be okay. Right. So, basic same principle that I've done with the um, cutlery holder. I like putting it on the back that it comes out of because otherwise it's going to get stuck to this paper and then the paper sticks on the back. So the plastic is nice because it doesn't stick to the back. So I just get my brush and I make sure that it goes in all the little nooks and crannies. But sometimes you just need to force your brush in there. So I just get my brush in everywhere. The nice thing when you're working with a darker color is you can see easily if you haven't picked it up with the paint. So yeah, just paint it normally, get all into all those little holes and crevices. And then it comes out like that. Hello, Elienki. <laughs> Don't you want to get to your embellishment first, Mom? Then it gives that a, a bit of a time just to dry. So we don't want to stand, uh, start the hair dryer or the heat gun or anything because that's going to pick up a lot of noise on your side. So what you can do is if it is a rainy day, you can heat it up with the um, hair dryer, but not too close, just so that the paint dries. And then... Um, yeah, then it's a bit quicker. We're making use of the lovely sun today. So hopefully it will dry quick as well. So then once you've finished painting your embellishment, without putting your fingers on it, <laughs> it should look something like that. I hope you can see. So this is painted with... Um, Petit Rouge Midnight in Paris. It's a very dark bluey color. I painted the box the same color. I'll do a video in your face. Mm -mm. Yeah. Okay, am I painting the whole thing? Yes, everything. So this is how quick it dries. It's already it's already dried so you can either put a second coat or you can start sealing it or putting your glaze onto it or whatever you want to do I'm going to give it a second coat because this had a stamp on here if you look closely you'll see it, it you can still see a bit of the stamp so um, yeah I'm going to give it a second coat Sippy, we're still running, eh? Yeah. So just basically giving it a second coat. Why do I get the impression that it stopped there on the screen? I'm hoping it doesn't. Yeah. Is it still going on? <laughs> Guys, can you still hear us? Because we're not sure if it stopped now. Oh, 
I've still no signal, so. Okay, but in any case. So we just painted like normal. This is a second coat, Midnight in Paris from Petit Rouge. I'm doing the back as well again. Now remember, because this is a chalk paint, before we seal it, it will normally stand for um, eight hours because it needs to cure. So um, before you seal it, make sure that it's gone through the eight hours of standing that it cures. And we normally seal with the Petit Rouge Le Lacquer. That is our sealant. It's an awesome sealant. It actually gives you like a satin finish to the project once it's completed. Let's be running out of hands here. Okay, Mom, do you want to show the people what you are doing from your side? I'm just painting my embellishment for my box. So just take it closer because I can't see there. Oh, with the drawer. Do you want to ask for that water? Is that <coughs> all right? Yeah, it's pretty. Can I just get the water Sorry. behind? So what I'm going to do now to bring out the definition on the um, embellishment is I'm just going to uh, wipe it with some water and a cloth. <coughs> so Brenda. Thanks Brenda. Okay. So I'm going to come closer That's just to Brenda. show you. She says everything's working. She can hear us. So the embellishment we've painted with Midnight in Paris from Petit Rouge. So I'm using a wet cloth or rag and I'm just going to lightly go over it and it actually lifts out that white pieces. If you can see on this side. Yeah, so I'm just doing that again. So this is going to be part of my definition that I want on my box. Okay. Would that be self to do? Nikki, it's not bad if you've had good experiences with Mod Podge, that's fine. But um, we prefer sealing with the same product that we've been using. So if we've used Petit Rouge chalk paint, we've been sealing with Petit Rouge um, Lalanka. Um, so they are basically designed to work together so yeah if it's been working for you that's fine but um, I would not recommend in the long run and March Podge has got the tendency to make things a bit um, sticky sticky with the coffee yes yeah I'm take it out for but from the um, the what the skier papier what about the skip up here? To, to just get the white out again. Yeah, you can always sand it with a sanding block as well. So this is about like I wanted. Okay. Should I put this in the water until I do my stencils? Yes. It's not done. You can actually feel it's dry. So all I want to do now is position it on my box. So that it looks about like this. I'm going to come closer so that you can see. So this just gives it a nice definition as well. Well, I'm just like, oh. yeah, I think the second coat does the trick. <laughs> the dark wood. I want to use the white glaze. It's in that box, Mark. Oh, sorry. 
If you don't mind, give it to me. I'll keep it for you. So what I want to do on this box is some white glaze, um, it's called Blanc, it's also Petit Rouge, so it's a pro product that goes with the paint and the, and the varnishes, and we use this to make, um, to distress our items. So this is a white, so you'll see that it's actually going to light up the dark blue quite substantially. So I just want to do half of it so that you can see. So basically you put it on like you would with a paint. And then you actually wipe it back. So let me just show you what I do. So there's it on. And then you start wiping it back. And you'll see it actually lighten up your project. And give it that old distress look so you see the difference between the two okay. so I'm going to continue doing the rest of my box with the um, white glaze are you doing a second cut on your box yes okay mom's doing an old sewing box in parchment from Petit Rouge I'm doing a cutlery box in Metat in Paris from Petit Rouge. what it's going to look like once it's done with the um, white wa uh, white glaze. This is the normal color. This is the white glaze. And just like the paint, it would need time to cure as well before you seal it. Just to recap, um, we're doing a kitchen challenge this week. So anything that you want to redo in your kitchen, uh, you've got the week to plan on it and do it. Even if it is just tying a ribbon around something or painting something. And then on Friday you share the picture with us on the page. <laughs> I'm using the Blanc glaze from Petit Rouge. I hope you guys can see. Okay. Do you want to come through mm -hmm. okay. Our space is limited. <laughs> So what have you been up to? What have you been doing? I've been sorting my sewing room out this morning. Yeah. And there is a lot of sewing stuff in there. There's a lot of stuff that's half done. <laughs> like your pants. Like my pants? Yes. Ooh. And my green pants. Those pants for the flowers. Oh, no. I'm getting pants with flowers. So tomorrow hopefully. It will all happen tomorrow. We can attend to that. So what I'm using on my box is the, um, the Blanc glaze from Petit Rouge. And I'm putting it on like I would normally paint and then I'm wiping it back. So it can give that 
I take this Tracy look. Now yeah, you can actually see the effect at the bottom quite nicely. You see how it picks up all those little grooves. Is that the second coat, Mom? Yes. For the bottom piece? Yes. Okay, so Mom's doing a sewing box with parchment from Petit Rouge. I've used um, Midnight in Paris and now I'm doing um, the white glaze over it and just wiping it back. Just to recap those people that have only just joined us, this is what we did in the last two sessions. This was a tray and we did the proteas. And mom's coffee table. And mom's coffee table. We did a water slide transfer at the top from um, velvet attic and then we did the legs and the sides with the um, hocus pocus rubber transfers and it actually came out very nicely okay. right so it seems that I've got one side left so what must I do with my Alright, now what I would think we do with I yours. Think I like funny skin coffee. Okay, so take the sanding block. Do you want the white to come through or do you want like a bit darker? No, I want the white to come through. Okay, so take your sanding because block. Because we're doing. Can I put these in the water? In the water, yeah. So the same way I've done now, now with my embellishment, wiping it back with the wet cloth. Um, Mom's going to actually take the sanding block and sand the pieces of like cancer block. That is too coarse. This one is on. Just show them what you're doing, like so. So she's just rubbing slightly over the embellishment with a sanding block. Also, just bringing in the white on the sanding uh, on the on the embellishment. See, it's picked up nicely parts of the white here. Yeah? I actually like that quite a lot. And then there. So now I'm ready to put my embellishment on. Just show them. Okay, this is a embellishment that's been sanded. And you'll see it's basically very much the same effect. So normally what I do is I use wood glue for this. Um, being as it may, we don't have any more wood glue. 
So the only thing I do have is clear plastic. So Tell me about that other stuff as well. Which stuff? That horrible name? <laughs> Sticks like... Oh, no, no, we can't talk about that. <laughs> it's really the, the name. Yeah, yeah, I know it's the name. <laughs> but that works as well. But, but we can't get to the hardware, so let's do what we have. So that I've got some wonders. clear glue. And I'm just going to apply it at the back of my embellishment. Everywhere where it needs to stick. Okay. And then this one I'm just going to measure with the eye a bit. Should be there. Okay, and then I would give it some time to actually dry properly before I seal it. So this is the type of effect you have. Okay. So like I said before, when you're painting with chalk paint, it needs to cure for eight hours before you seal it. So this will be, um, yeah, you can also use your glue gun, Nikki, thank you. So we're going to wait eight hours before we seal this. And then we will seal it with the Petit Rouge Le Lacquer, which is this one. It gives it a nice satiny finish. Mine is still wet. Okay. So I'm you're stuck. I'm stuck for a little while. Okay, don't you want to do some dark glazing on your embellishment? Oh, why? I like that one. <laughs> you can wipe it back. Do oh, you like that? Like it, like that. Okay. Right. Okay. So, yeah, this is going to be my cutlery box. Well, it is already my cutlery box. And then I'm just going to stack my knives and forks and spoons and stuff into it. I would let, let it dry like this and probably put something on top just to give it some pressure. Just feel my leg outside if we can do the stenciling. Okay. <coughs> I'll put it on top of that. Is it dry now? Okay, put it in the sun again. Put it on top there, where, on that. Were you painting this one last or first? Last. Just feel the box. We must do something on the box. Okay. So what do you want to do on the box? Must I repeat that same stencil? I would actually not. Okay. I would go in with the um, dark glaze. Okay. Have you used this brush? Okay, so let's get some um, antique chateau glaze. And so there are four different colors of glaze for Petit Rouge. One is the Blanc which you've seen me use. One is the H Chateau, which is a dark brownie color. Then there's an antique, which is a more yellowy brown color. And then there's the noir, which is a more blackish color. So what we're going to do, Mo, I'm sorry, will that, will over your that box. go with that now? It will go with it, yes. We, yes, need, to, do. we need to have a clean rag come in here. I see it's still a bit wet here, is it? It's okay. Okay. So we're going to be aging it using the H Chateau glaze. So just to give you an idea, it's a very watery substance. You see it's not dripping away either. So we're going to be doing it only on the sides and all the places it would naturally age. So, yeah, uh, let's see if I can show like this. So, everywhere there. 
and I would imagine somewhere here where the locks are. And if you run out of it, you just use a little bit more. Would it not work better once you've sealed it? Um, well, there's two ways you can do it. You can either do it when you've sealed it, or you can do it before no. you seal it. Okay. Obviously, if you've sealed it, you're going to have more time to work with your with your glaze. Where if you don't seal it, you need to work quite quickly with your glaze. Can you see the difference? Probably not. I'm going to come in closer now. So this is raw onto the chalk paint itself without being sealed. So just show this to them and then I want to show them what we do to get it a bit soft. So at the moment it's very um, hard uh, so we can get it a bit softer by just damping our cloth a bit and just going over the areas where we want it to blend in. And even if it takes off some of your, of your paint. <laughs> it gives it that old look. Old look. There we go. Yes, so there we go. That's that's about the front of it. So you can either seal your project with the glaze, uh, with the um, sealant, sealant, and then do the glaze over it, or you can straight onto your chalk paint do the glaze. If you're new to glaze, I would recommend that you seal your project first, so that it gives you enough time to actually play and get used to the glaze before you start using it. All right. So then this side is all wet. Should we see if your lid is dry? Because this is still wet. Okay, this one's dry. So are you going to do the stenciling with the same colour as your embellishment? Yes. No, I don't care. It's yours. Why do you think? Yeah, no, I get the right. Yeah. Okay, that's where the lock is. So that we've got it. Do you want it the wrong way around? Is this where the lock is? This is where the lock is. Okay, cool. So you've got the right one. Remember with that other little box I made, I, I did it the, the other way, way around. around. <laughs> And then you've got to start all over again. So maybe if we just get some masking tape. Do you think? Yeah, I think that would be nice. But just slightly, slightly, not so harsh that your embellishment can still stand out. Yeah. So the stencil we're using now is the script, skew script stencil. Um, it's one of our stencils as well. So yeah, Ma, um, which color are you going to use? Are we leaving that up? Not there. Yeah, we should. A little piece. Yes. Botanique. The same as that. Oh. Or do you think a different color? No, I think Do not. you think that black? No. I mean that color. No, that's okay. too dark. So the Botanique is like a dark eggy green. So we're going to be use that. We're using that for the stencil. All right. So what she does is she dries a brush quite thoroughly on the um, piece of rag, and then puts the stencil down and go like this round circular motions. Is that too dark? No, I think it's fine. Let's have a peek. Yeah, no, I think it's perfect. There you go. Are you going to do the whole portion of it? Uh, should I leave that area open? Or do? No, I think just, but, but just don't go too dark. 
where it touches, it touches. Basically. So this is an old sewing box um, that my mom wanted to redo. And on my side I had the cutlery box, like so, which I did with the embellishment. So the challenge for you for this week is to take something from your kitchen and to remake it. It could be anything that you want to change or maybe put a ribbon on or maybe paint or decoupage. So anything that you are feeling comfortable with, um, then you can actually get it done and post it on the page before Friday. So um, just let's have some fun. Nikki, the brush we are using at the moment is a stencil brush. It's a short stubby, let us just show them. It's a short little stubby brush. You'll see it's got a flat, flat point, but it's actually quite small. It's about 10 centimeter. Oops, you're out. All right. That's what we're using. But you can also be using one of these brushes um, as long as it's got a round point. So I think in lockdown, you can't be too choosy of what you've got. So you have to use what you have. I would just not recommend using a flat brush because that would make your paint smear underneath your stencil and you don't want that. You do use dry brushing techniques, so you put it in the paint, you dry it on a piece of rag like this, and then you actually dry it quite severely so that when you test it on your hand it actually looks like a bit of blusher. And then you know you've got enough paint to do your stencil. Otherwise, the stencil, the, uh, the paint goes underneath the stencil. Okay, well, I think that is dashed. Now we have a few. But let's open it on, on their side so that I can actually see from their side. So we're going to open the stencil now. Are you ready? Can you see? Can you see? Let me see. <laughs> oh, you want to see your own? <laughs> so it's a yes. skew script stencil that we've used on top of these. And then we're going to be putting an embellishment onto it as well. Like so. And it is a sewing box. So we still might do some um, glazing in the corners like for aging. So yeah, that's that's what we've got. So your challenge for this week, once again, I sound like a gramophone, is to pick something from your kitchen, remake it, even if you just want to tie a ribbon to it, and post it on our group by Friday. So it doesn't need to be the same paint that we're using, just anything that you're remaking, and um, make it look different from what it used to. So you're welcome to do before and after picks, and post it on the page so we can all share your creativity. We have started putting up pictures of people that have been sending it through. So just remember that you are welcome to put your pictures on there. Also, um, the little coffee table we did and the tray we did will be putting on there as well. Is that it? One of them. I must actually show them. Um my box that I did with where my brawn liquidizer goes in, yeah. food processor goes in. Just to recap, this was the table we did. We used um, the Velvet Attic water slide, yeah, and we used the Hocus Focus rub on transfer on the sides and on the feet. That was um, yesterday and the day before, or Saturday and Fridays. And this was the tray we did with the proteas and the script stenciling. Nikki, it's only been a pleasure. <laughs> so guys, please make your stuff, get it up on the page, and then we'll let you know tomorrow morning what time we'll be on um, tomorrow afternoon. I hope you've got a lovely day, and keep on crafting. Bye. Have a nice evening.